Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anitia Antoine. The Sedition's Top Stories. PAHO urges the region to respond rapidly to the mental health effects of COVID-19. St. Lucia's Health Minister lauds the diplomatic cause contribution to the national COVID fight. And the annual Grizzly Top Achievers still a night. St. Lucia, along with the countries of the Caribbean and Latin Americas, have been called upon to expand and invest in mental health services to cope with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The call has come from the director of the Pan-American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne. Noting a mental health crisis in the region brought on by the effects of COVID-19, the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, has been helping countries increase their capacity to provide mental health support at the community levels. In her latest update to this region during a weekly press briefing, PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne asserts that the coronavirus has exacerbated what was already a silent epidemic in our part of the world. In our region, depression and anxiety are two of the leading causes of disability. We are also home to the second highest levels of alcohol consumption in the world. And emergencies can worsen these conditions. Surveys from the three countries in our region that are most impacted by COVID-19, the United States of America, Brazil, and Mexico, show that about half of adults are stressed by the pandemic. And early data show that many are coping by using drugs and alcohol, which can create a vicious cycle that makes people more prone to and can exacerbate mental health issues. In spite of increased needs during these challenging times, mental health support may be increasingly out of reach due to strict lockdowns or as the already scarce mental health staff and budgets are reallocated to the COVID-19 response. Dr. Etienne adds that this is especially concerning for patients who are affected by COVID-19 as they don't only experience physical symptoms, but many also experience insomnia, difficulty to sleep, delirium, or even depression. Doctors, nurses, and health workers, she says, who are risking their lives on the front line, working longer hours than ever before, are facing burnout, anxiety, and depression. We need governments to prioritize mental health as part of the response to the pandemic. And, and at the same time, countries must make investments to scale up services, to hire and train additional staff. One of the most effective and efficient ways to do this is to integrate mental health and psychosocial support within primary healthcare systems. So they're easily accessible to those who need them most. Dr. Etienne stresses on the need for the region to work assiduously to destigmatize mental health, as everyone who needs mental health support should feel comfortable asking for help and seek professional support where needed. PAHO has been helping countries to strengthen policies and services and to expand online learning for health workers so they know how to identify and support survivors of violence during the pandemic. St. Lucia's 311 hotline offers psychosocial support services to individuals during the pandemic. Here at home, Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, has lauded the diplomatic call for its steadfast assistance to the government and people of St. Lucia in the COVID fight. I want to thank all our ambassadors who have put their best foot forward. They have provided us with um, quite a number of PPEs, quite a lot of masks, gloves, um, and so on especially the Taiwanese ambassador, the government and people of Taiwan, as well as the Cuban ambassador, the government and people of Cuba. We saw the number of nurses, a hundred and something nurses and doctors that came to us from the very beginning of this, from the onset of the virus. And they have remained with us um, up till now. A few of them returned but the majority of them are still here with us in St. Lucia, helping us to maintain our good record 
and to keep taking care of our people here in St. Lucia. Senator Honorable Mary Isaac. Meanwhile, the OACS Commission has made a donation of face shields to support the transition of schools to the new COVID-19 safety preparations for the 2020-2021 academic year. More in this report. The donation forms part of the Commission's Corporate Social Responsibility Commitment to contribute to the societal goals of the OACS member states and support OACS communities in shaping their shared prosperity. Overall, we want to thank the staff, not just at Dame Paulette, but of all the schools on island for putting together the initiatives to get students back in school come September. And we hope that our gift of masks to the teachers will assist in preparing the Dame Paulette School to be ready come September and to be focused on teaching our youth rather than worrying about their health as much. Principal of the Dame Paulette Louise Primary School, Mrs. Ethelyn Leos, thanked the OCS Commission for the donation. The face shields will definitely augur well for us as a school and as a teaching staff. The teachers will have an additional layer of protection as they go about continuing the journey that we have set up from the beginning in 2003 of making sure our students achieve the best, focusing on education and not on all the other things that can be distractions. Mr. Luizo, the face shields do more than just protect us. It also gives us this kind of a surety and assurance that everything is fine, not just with Dame Paulette, but with education in St. Lucia. Principal of the Carmen Rennie Memorial School, Sianna Nolly George, says a gesture from the OCS Commission reinforces the school's safety protocols for the new academic year. Life as we know it will never be the same. The COVID-19 pandemic prevention through social distancing and health and safety protocols has introduced the new normal into our education system. As an educational institution, we have a collective responsibility to ensure that the school environment is safe and that mandated protocols for the education system are in place to receive our staff and students when they return next month. The use of face covering, such as a face shield, is an important element in ensuring the safety of staff, students and other key stakeholders on the ground. And we trust that this donation will make the transition a little better for all. The relationship between the OECS Commission and the Carmen Rene Memorial School is slowly growing. And with this small donation and future opportunities, we aim for a long, fruitful relationship. The OECS Commission presented 42 face shields to the principal and staff of the Camille Henry Memorial School. The cooperation initiative between the Camille Henry Memorial School and the OECS Commission facilitated staff of the OECS in resolving the abrupt interruption to classroom learning. We are here again to express our appreciation to your principal and staff for your kind generosity and that of the teachers who assisted in the process in allowing nine children of staff of the OECS Commission to be registered on the online learning platform of the Camille Henry Memorial School during May to June 2020. The students were registered across grades one to grade six and the feedback from the parents we received were very positive. I must mention that we had two students from the Commonwealth of Dominica who also participated and benefited from this cooperative initiative with your school. We felt it prudent though that given your quick response and your willingness to partner with the OECS Commission, that we contribute to the inventory of your personal protective equipment that your school must now acquire to meet the new safety and health protocols. Principal of the Camille Henry Memorial School, Beverly Diodoni, thanked the OECS Commission for the presentation. This contribution will greatly assist in offsetting the huge financial burden on the school in preparation for the reopening while ensuring all safety protocols are in place. We would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the Commission and we look forward to continuous collaboration between the OECS Commission and the Camille Henry Memorial School. The OECS Commission has partnered with other schools in St. Lucia and the Commonwealth of Dominica 
through the annual social outreach and educational activities. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The annual Grosley Top Achievers Award ceremony has put a smile on the faces of many students, parents and teachers. Roger Barrow Lawrence reports. Top achievers from the constituency of Grosley have been awarded for their successes. The 9th annual Grosley Top Achievers Ceremony recognized the outstanding academic performances of students from the constituency in the common entrance examinations. Parliamentary representative for Grosley, the Honorable Leonard Montout, congratulated the top achieving students on a job well done and spoke of the importance of recognizing the youth and their achievements. This annual ceremony is very significant to me because I am one who believes in accentuating the positives about our youth, our young people. And when they do good, when they perform well, I think they have to be celebrated, they have to be given due recognition and the praise that they deserve. I think that in itself serves as a further motivation and encouragement to them as well as an inspiration to others to, to at least pursue excellence and to aim to do better in the future. I am hoping too that we, when we present them, we present them as models to their pairs that they, the pairs can emulate. And so I think it's all around a positive because we too often only speak of the negative things about our young people, but there's a lot to celebrate among our youth. And I think whenever we get the opportunity, we profit that opportunity. And this is one occasion when we you know, take pleasure in doing so annually. This year's top achievers from Grosley are as follows. The common entrance exams, Christian George, Thierry Morrill, Brianne Seely, and Kyle Charles. Also in receipt of special awards for second place are Ava George, Menelik Nurse, Brielle Asson, and Zohan Aurelia. The top achievers were rewarded with laptops and plaques for their exemplary performances. Top achiever Thierry Morrill expressed gratitude to the parliamentary representative on behalf of the achievers. Despite the current economic climate due to COVID-19, the achievements of the youth definitely did not go unnoticed. We are therefore most overjoyed at the recognition. Our gifts will definitely be used to assist us in our educational journey. I would like to express my gratitude towards the many persons who worked tirelessly to ensure that this event was successfully executed. We, the recipients, are grateful for the acknowledgement of our efforts as this year's top common entrance achievers of our respective schools. Sidney J. Harris says, and I quote, The windows are open, the opportunities await. End of quote. It's up to us now to use our new devices and the skills, values and knowledge acquired thus far to take us to a higher level. The Grosley Constituency Top Achievers Awards took place on Tuesday, August 18th at the Grosley Human Resource Center. From the Government Information Service, I am Rog Varo Lawrence reporting. A film series has begun airing this month to educate the public on climate change and biodiversity. The Department of Sustainable Development embarked on this production to convey how the National Environmental Information System can be harnessed for developing scenarios in St. Lucia's future and planning for such eventualities. Jesse Leos has a report. The film series has been launched to highlight the value of St. Lucia's one-of-a-kind environmental information system. Referred to as the NEIS, this web-based platform provides reports on the state of the island's environment and updates on the implementation of multilateral environmental agreements that the country is signed on to. The film series, titled St. Lucia Into the Future, will be aired over three seasons, each themed climate change, land degradation, and biodiversity. The films demonstrate the use of the NEIS for translation of data into useful and actionable information and presents a baseline for environmental scenarios in St. Lucia, which can be revisited, revised, and used to inform strategic planning. We just want to bring home the message of how climate change can impact a small island developing state like St. Lucia. And you know what's the public role in this right now? 
So this is why the film comes in. So we're targeting everyone at all levels for them to see the value of this national environmental information system, how it will allow us to um, envision these scenarios that we have generated and see what improvements we can make to make St. Lucia better in terms of environmental management. That was Daniel Gordon, project manager at the Department of Sustainable Development. The film series is an undertaking of the department's increased St. Lucia's capacity to monitor multilateral environmental agreements, MEA, implementation and sustainable development project. The project's main deliverable is NEIS. Being the first of its kind in the region makes St. Lucia a trailblazer for its online environmental information platform. To so access the reports on there, you can go to www.neis.govt.lc. So this is where the public can access the reports generated from the data. Now you can access both reports and the data, so you can create your own reports based on the data there. But that data comes from government and non-governmental organizations who have agreed through an MOU to contribute periodically to this national environmental information system. So you have agencies like Central Statistics Office, you have Department of Planning, Ministry of Health and Wellness, you also have um, National Lucia National Trust. Met Office? Yes, Met mm -hmm. Office there as well. So you have multiple agencies, all who have agreed through this MOU to, to, um, to commit to uploading data in a very regular manner. Project manager Daniel Gordon encourages the public to visit the NEIS site at neis.govt.lc and follow the film series airing weekly. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novella Quayol. Monsieur Ta Anissia. Monsieur Madame, Department of Kenny West Responsibility, Pour formation en gouvernement cette ci la CGIS, et Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à présenter une nouvelle à Coyol. Présenter Primus Hutchinson. Puis cette ci j'ai enregistré un cas neuf de maladie de corona. Pour ce cas là, sorti mardi, le 18 août 2020. Et cas neuf ça là, c'est une madame, trois deux ans de l'âge, qui voyage sorti l'Amérique qui était en quarantaine depuis l'arrivée de cette ci Je ne peux pas montrer que la condition est stable et qu'il est présentement à l'hôpital Victoria. Quand il y a ça, il y a les mots cas qui sont confirmés à cette ci pour 26 et un total de 4768. Le département de santé a encore conseillé public là qui, même quand les autorités ont essayé de ménager ce cas de ça, a aussi conduit l'investigation pour savoir que quand il y a des gens qui étaient en contact et puis les vidéos, c'est faux, ils ont appris à avoir une responsabilité personnellement pour protéger les gens et la famille aussi. Le département de santé a averti pour que les gens ne soient pas comblés à une grande quantité et résister pour participer à des activités sociales en public. Le public a aussi trouvé une notification que tout protocole a continué de la même façon comme avant pour servir les masques à souffrir de en public. Continuez pour rester 6 pieds de distance à l'autre. Le département de santé a fait un grand appel pour l'union et fort national pour réduire à ce menace pandémie à ce pays. Toutes ces cliniques ont resté ouvertes et aussi les gens ont téléphoné 311 pour demander des questions et bien à ce qui a concerné le public. Le département de santé a continué pour conseiller le public pour laver la main. Et puis, ça va avec l'eau, c'est le sanitaire, et toujours, bah oui, bouche, le ou ka, tout et bien, esténé. Première phase, pour vivre ouvert opération secteur touristique, puis cette ci j'ai trouvé allongé 
pour le 3 septembre 2020. Les autorités expliquent que Degwe Wis Initiative Sala a apporté avec Degwe Wis la qui a apporté fait nécessaire pour longer à son opération secteur touristique là. Le ministère des Affaires touristiques a travaillé et collaboré très près et puis le ministère de la Santé pour faire assurer que l'année en place qui est très rude pour tout le monde qui est engagé pour suivre pour assurer la protection en place. Le ministre des Affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede, note que pendant qu'il a allongé à ce temps pour le secteur touristique, il a continué à opérer et fait en place aussi pour explorer la façon pour ajouter l'autre attraction et le restaurant pour aider à augmenter la situation de l'argent étranger pour accueillir l'économie du pays à être plus fort. Si vous êtes pas au ministre des Affaires touristiques, nous allons l'inviter à déclarer qu'il y a déjà considéré pour embrasser les services nager qui ont activité. Le secteur touristique là, qui a ouvert l'autre propriété et coopération qui a l'intérêt de la juridiction internationale depuis une certification contre la maladie corona. Une association qui est établie pour ménager les affaires éducation, les petits enfants à l'école, qui a pris des marches pour chercher façon pour changer l'école sur l'opération à la maladie de corona. Nous avons une discussion à ce NTN, officier des relations publiques pour l'association sur la M. Greenwich Giovanni Moses explique que la maladie de corona a plan toute organisation et institution de cette ci avec l'école des enfants à partir de différents. Moses dit que, au résultat de la maladie, moins d'enfants qui ont trouvé à l'école à présent. Bon, ça a affecté ni les parents et aussi de l'école à payer. En façon éducation, c'est les enfants et aussi l'économie de l'opération de l'école. Pour raison ça, l'association a déjà décidé d'organiser une démarche pour établir un lot fonds pour faciliter la continuation de l'école à cette ci Selon M. Moses, c'est un spectacle même qu'on programme pour les enfants qui étaient capables à la télévision à l'Amérique à temps passé, qui était capable de nous Sesame Street. En chair de nous, l'autre temps, c'est ça, nous avons travaillé à la télévision, Sesame Street. Et là, l'autre qualité programme. Mais ça, là, nous avons fait là actuellement, l'Ocean Kind of Pal, c'est un petit manier même pour Sesame Street. Ça, quand il y a des nous, pour faire l'argent, nous avons besoin, pour aider nous, euh, manager les affaires, nous, pour l'école le qui est ouvert. Parce que, en chair, c'est bagarre là, nous avons besoin pour faire et tout travail, nous, nous passons à. Euh, Uh, fait ou trois journées par um, si pour nous sur so nos cas fait qui manière ça là pour voir ouais, que la nation et public cette ici ça by ça et ça pour aider à sa association pour faire um, ça fait nos marchés officier de relations publiques là dit aussi comme la caïne en réduction à l'immo aux enfants qui a ça assisté l'école et qui a été nécessaire pour que l'école l'a trouvé une façon qui a aidé à continuer pour opérer. So, si nous avons des années 50, nous avons 30, nous avons 15, vous comprenez? So, et ça, c'est une manière qui est um, difficile pour manager. Parce que vous ne pouvez pas faire um, mener l'argent ou de faire ou de faire comme avant. Et puis, les mots qui sont coupés, c'est hein, très difficile pour nous. Et puis, comme nous dit, l'association, as, as, pour chimer ça, pour faire manière pour mener à l'eau fond, pour mener l'argent pour bailler si pour, pour tout ce monde qui est ça. C'est comme ça, nous avons nous faire là, monsieur, madame. Je vais vous faire un pour regarder, pour avoir une invitation, pour chercher plus moi encore. Si vous avez sauvé la vie, vous avez posé une autre nouvelle à quoi vous avez présent. Vous avez vu pour cette année-ci. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.